team ready to assist with any response uh, that you all may need, uh, any specific information. Uh, or if you need more information that's not covered on these slides, you can shoot me an email, I'll get my team engaged to reach out to you. That is my office phone number. Uh, it is uh, sent directly to my uh, government cell phone here. So Uncle Sam knows where I am 24 seven, even on the weekends. So uh, if you call me, uh, we answer um, Monday through Friday, eight to 4.30, but the best thing to do is probably to shoot me an email. So in case I need to engage my team, they can assist accordingly. <clears throat> So for today's presentation, let me move this little nifty tool over here. Uh, we're going to talk about the economic relief. And so going all the way back to March of last year when this pandemic first started, the first act that was passed was the CARES Act. Um, that's where the Paycheck Protection Program, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Programs first came online. Understanding there was a need for the Paycheck Protection Program and more flexibility needed uh, the Flexibility Act was passed, which increased the time to exhaust the Triple P, where it went from eight weeks to 24 weeks. Um, the other thing, too, is certain for profit um, small businesses were not eligible, certain nonprofits were not eligible. That was also changed. You all may have recalled that 75% um, had to be used for payroll purposes. That was reduced down to 60%, again, to allow more flexibility. The um, uh, Economic Aid Act was passed earlier this year, which revived the Paycheck Protection Program. So the first round of Triple P exhausted August 8th of 2020. A lot of folks still needed assistance. And quite frankly, there was still money left on the table. I don't recall the specifics. I think it was $120 billion. Um, and that's just kind of thinking off the top of my head. So therefore, uh, under the new uh, administration, you know, the Economic Aid Act was passed to revive the Paycheck Protection Program. And then most importantly, uh, there's the American Rescue Plan that was recently passed by President Biden on March 11th, which also brings more disaster assistance programs to you all, the small business owners. So just a quick overview of where are we going. So I'll talk about the different types of economic relief funding options, uh, the different types of loan programs, such as the uh, Triple P, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, also known as IDLE, the SBA Debt Relief, so if you had an existing 7A loan, a 504 loan, and how the U.S. Uh, Small Business Administration is helping you all out. I believe I left off under payments and grant programs, so what's not commonly um, practiced with the SBA's grant programs for for-profit businesses, usually when SBA offers not, uh, grants, it's usually for nonprofits to provide entrepreneurial development to uh, for small businesses. Um, what's going to be coming up uh, in the very near future is supplemental targeted idle advance. Um, for those like Renee's department, there's a program called Community Navigators are coming out. And then of course, a lot of people are very eager to learn more about the restaurant revitalization grants. <clears throat> okay. So as I mentioned a little while ago, uh, late February, early March, uh, the Biden-Harris administration, NSBA took steps to ensure inclusiveness and equitable relief for uh, America's small uh, mom and pop shops. Uh, again, March 11th was when the American Rescue Plan was signed into effect. March 30th uh, was when the Triple P was extended. So that is key. There was a lot of people that were anxious as the deadline was looming for the Paycheck Protection Program. Originally, it was supposed to end on March 31st of 2021, but um, on March 30th, so the day before it was supposed to expire, uh, President Biden signed the extension, which extended the Triple P program until May 31st. So if you have not taken out your first draw or you're uh, hesitant about taking out your second draw, you still have until May 31st uh, or until funds are exhausted um, for the Paycheck Protection Program. Me, I'm a very visual person, and oftentimes I like to see uh, what are the different types of programs and what is considered a, a grant, what's a loan. So um, a lot of people are, are a little confused about the IDOL that it was similar to the Paycheck Protection Program in that it was a grant. Well, technically, the Paycheck Protection Program is a loan. If you do not meet the criteria of using it for payroll purposes of 60% or more, then you would have to repay it. Also, uh, if you had an existing 7A or 504 loan, there was an SBA debt relief program in place where six months of your payments were being uh, waived um, by the U.S. Small Business Administration. Whenever there's a natural disaster, the economic injury disaster loans are designed to help small businesses recover. So 
Um, I was in Corpus Christi, for example, in 2017 when Hurricane Harvey hit. And not only uh, did SBA provide uh, disaster assistance to homeowners, but also to small businesses under the idle program. What was new with the COVID versus uh, previous natural disasters is the idle advance. So the idle advance uh, was a grant available on a first come first serve basis for small businesses. And it basically equated to about $1,000 per employee. So say I am a small mom and pop shop and it's just me and my significant other. Okay, we received uh, $2,000 because it's again, $1,000 per employee. Under this new economic aid uh, act, uh, there's now something called the targeted idle advance. So if you are in a designated low income area and there is a link on SBA's website, that <clears throat> shows if you are indeed in a uh, low income area, you may be eligible for an additional uh, grant. So the initial cap for the idle advance was $10,000. So going back to my example of uh, being a sole prop, me and my significant other, we only received $2,000. There is a possibility I may receive an additional up to $8,000, again, not to exceed $10,000. Uh, in order to check to see if you qualify, of course, check the map, number one. Number two, SBA will be reaching out to you directly. So there's no way to apply for this program. So it's only for those that received the idle advance before. Keep an eye out on your inbox that you originally used whenever you submitted your idle application. Make sure it is in SBA.gov because there's a lot of people trying to scam. There's a lot of people trying to fish, uh, trying to get your information. But just make sure it's from an SBA.gov link. And then we'll talk more about the Shutter Venues Operators Grants and the Restaurant Revitalization. Now, to uh, Renee and her team, I made sure to get you all uh, this presentation before tomorrow. Why? Because that's when the Shutter Venues Operators Grant portal does go live. So that's why it was uh, very crucial to get this presentation out to uh, your folks as soon as possible. Okay. So starting with the um, Paycheck Protection Program, the, the takeaways. Uh, again, it was expanded from uh, eight weeks up to 24 weeks. And so that is negotiated with an SBA uh, Triple P participating lender. The big difference of IDLE and Triple P is Triple P is through the banks while the IDLE is through directly SBA's website. You can negotiate with a lender of when to exhaust the Triple P between eight weeks and 24. So it shouldn't be just eight weeks you're not automatically going to get 24, it should be negotiated, okay? Um, the other common question I get is, do I have to go to the same bank to get the second draw if I already received the first draw? And the answer is no. You can go to another SBA Triple P participating lenders. If you, I don't know, let's just say it took a little longer than expected uh, to get your first draw, you can go to a smaller bank if, if you'd like. I mean, if you had a great experience, by all means, I'm encouraging you to stay with those folks, but. If for whatever reason you think it took a while, you can go to a smaller institution that's still participating in the program. Uh, deduction of expenses covered with forgiven Triple P loan debt on federal taxes. Uh, updated simplified forgiveness form to include Triple P loans up to 150,000. And I like this little statistic here where, you know, 86% 80 of Triple P loans submitted in 2020 were less than 150,000. So we really are trying to target small businesses. Uh, you all may recall whenever the first Triple P uh, loans were made available, there were a lot of big name companies that met the description of a small business, but did not meet the spirit of the loan. So that's why, especially for uh, the Economic Aid Act, we really try to target those small mom and pop shops. And then if you did receive the idle advance initially, you were supposed to claim that on the Triple P forgiveness form, but now we uh, redacted that. So you don't have to, you know, put if you did indeed uh, get the idle advance on your Triple P forms. Okay. So again, we're talking about two different vehicles here. We talked a little bit about the Triple P. Now let's switch over to the idle loan. So um, the idle was originally uh, supposed to exhaust December 31st of 2020. But again, there are so many people still requesting assistance. And you know, quite frankly, there's probably over 100,000 applications that are being processed by the US, US Small Business Administration for the IDA loan. Um, <clears throat> for the terms, if you are a for-profit, it's a fixed, so it's no adjustable rate. It is a fixed 3.75. 
for nonprofits, 2.75 up to 30 years, no prepayment penalty. So if you want to pay it off sooner, you can, you know, loans over 25,000 has to be secured by UCC filings. Uh, eligibilities, there is no one shoe fits all uh, type of definitions. What we would encourage folks to do if you have not applied for the idol is take a look at the SBA's website. Um, we, I try to post as many links as possible on these presentations. So you all have a reference, you know, I would definitely take a look at sba.gov forward slash high standards to make sure that you meet the definition. So what they're looking at is your North American industry classification system code. So your next code to determine whether, you know, if you have 500 or fewer than employees, your annual revenue is over a certain amount. Uh, that's how you can make that determination. Okay. Um, Something new that has come about as far as the American Rescue Plan Act is there was initially a one-year deferment on IDLE loans made. So <clears throat> using uh, examples again. So if I got approved for IDLE July of 2020, technically the first payment for IDLE was due July of 2021. But now under the new American uh, Rescue Plan Act, um, you have a 24 month de deferment now. So you don't have to make your first payment until July of 2022. That being said, as a big caveat, interest is being accrued um, if uh, you are exhausted or um, utilizing the deferment, I should say. So um, you're not going to get penalized if you start making payments sooner, but just please know, even though you have a 24 month deferment, that interest is being accrued. Um, <clears throat> originally, under the idle, the max amount that you could get approved for was 150,000. That has now changed to up to 500,000. So if you are barely applying for idle for the first time, you can put, you know, um, if you can justify it up to 500,000. And if you already took, uh, took out an idle loan, and of course the max before was 150,000, the second bullet here says you do not need to submit an increase request. SBA will reach out directly and provide details uh, how to request an increase. Again, either they, they will call you, but more than likely they're going to email you if you do indeed need a uh, increase. So making sure again that it's from an SBA.gov link, not from um, an SBA.com. You know, sadly there is a, a website out there called SBA.com. And when you go onto that page, it clearly states we are not affiliated with the U.S. Small Business Administration. So just be cautious whenever whatever links you're clicking on. And as I previously mentioned, you know, the, the, the deferment process was extended to 24 months if you already had a loan in 2020. Um, and if you make an idle loan in 2021, instead of paying 12 months, and now it is 18 months. So that's key. Again, we're trying to get small businesses up and running before the payments have to be made back. That's what's key. So um, if you had an existing 7A, 504, or microloan, so these are SBA's traditional loan products. So uh, prior to the pandemic even starting, you know, if you were a small business owner trying to start a small business, whenever you approach a banker, um, an SBA participating lender, that's where they would discuss with you a 7A, microloan, 504, just depending on what your business needs were. So there was a deferment process in place. Um, six months originally for 2020 and for 2021 i'm reading here it says you know three months of principal and interest uh, is fully dispersed and after any deferment kept at nine thousand dollars borrowers do not need to apply for this what i would do is check your bank statements um making sure that you know if the bank uh did defer that's great but if they did not defer the payment under the sb debt relief you may want to reach out to your loan officer to see uh how you can get those payments deferred Okay, and as I mentioned about the targeted idle advance. So no action required until contacted by the SBA via direct email invite. Folks, I cannot stress this enough. Whatever email address you put whenever you first applied for idle, please continue to monitor that if you receive the idle advance. Um, without going into specifics, there was a small business owner here in San Antonio who did not actively monitor his inbox. And when he brought it to my attention, hey, I want to learn more about the targeted idle advance. And I said, keep an eye on your inbox, uh, your email address that you put in the application. Sure enough, SBA reached out to him two weeks prior to him reaching out to me uh, about the targeted idle advance. So indeed, he did qualify and he did follow up on that email. But 
Um, again, check your spam, your, uh, your junk inbox, uh, making sure that SBA did not send you an email if you do qualify. Okay. So new program for the Economic Aid Act only for businesses and nonprofits that again, that apply for EIDL. So again, as I mentioned earlier, low income community have suffered greater than 30% of economic loss. And number three, you have less than uh, 300 or less than few employees. If you meet the above, uh, again, balance will be paid up to a full $10,000. So remember early on, I used the example of a sole prop only receiving $2,000 initially. Well, you may receive up to $8,000 additionally. So if you received 8,000 the first go around, you are an LLC, it's yourself and seven other employees, then you would only receive only $2,000. So I just want to clarify that, that it's up to $10,000. Okay, um, what SB is going to request, uh, if you are indeed uh, eligible, is your 2019 federal tax returns. We understand some folks are still applying for their 2020, including myself. I haven't followed my 2020 just yet. So they're gonna be looking at your 2019 federal tax returns. So you may be requested to uh, submit a 4506T, which is your tax transcripts form, uh, EIN, social security number that was originally on your idle application, monthly gross receipts, uh, confirming that the information is still uh, accurate. So if you move location, SBA wants to know if you moved your small business. So maybe perhaps you were uh, designated in a low income area. Now you're not, you may want to clarify that because if there's an audit done and indeed it does show that you moved locations, you may be uh, responsible to repay those funds. Okay, um, targeted idle events, only one submission for each targeted idle events can be made. Carefully review the bank information. That was another big issue that we've had with uh, small businesses where um, John Doe submitted his personal bank information versus the business bank information and there was an error in the process which delayed the funds. So whenever you fill out the application, uh, making sure that it's still the same uh, bank account information for the targeted idle events. Um, if you do submit a different bank account number, it may delay uh, the funds being dispersed. Uh, SBA's goal is to, uh, to process compl uh, completed excuse me, applications within 21 days. Um, you know, bear with us on that 21 days mark. I will say again that there's been over 100,000 um, uh, historically speaking, applications being processed on a daily basis. As a matter of fact, SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance had to expand their team to temp employees to help with processing these applications. If you have any questions as to whether or not you qualify, you can always email targetedadvance at sba.gov. Um, if you do email them, a key note to include is your SBA application number. So on the title or the subject line, if you do email this, um, inbox to see if you do qualify for the targeted idle events on the subject line put your sba application number more than likely it should start with a three um what is very um uh time sensitive uh, we're switching over now to the shutter venues operators grant so now we're going from the loan side of the house of sba to uh, the grant side so <clears throat> under the Shutter Venues Operators Grant, there's a little over $16 billion uh, available with the maximum grant up to $10 million per, um, per entity. So if you have an LLC that has multiple, if you have an umbrella LLC that have multiple LLCs underneath that, you just know it's up to $10 million, but you can get up to 5 million per location, but not to exceed $10 million. Folks on this right here, the latest information for the Shutter Venues Operators Grants, and I know there's a lot of technical questions or what if scenarios. I'll tell you all right now. If you go to sba.gov forward slash SVOG, again, that's sba.gov forward slash SVOG, on there in the middle of that website, you'll find a document or a hyperlink called Frequently Asked Questions. And that is being updated again almost on a weekly, if not daily basis on potential uh, eligibility questions so, or scenarios. Um, but the main thing this uh, grant is trying to capture is the live venue operators or promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts organizations, motion pictures, relevant museum operators. It does include um, local uh, government entities as well that are under this museum or zoos, aquariums, talent reps, and most importantly, must have been in operation as of February 29th 
of 2020. So if you started your small business right when the pandemic was starting, I started my small business on March 1st of 2020. Unfortunately, you didn't qualify. But if you did start your business on February 29th or before, you do qualify. And um, the applications are opening tomorrow. So that's why whenever Sonia with Renee's team reached out to me and said, hey, uh, we want to do a presentation, like let's do it before April 8th, because I want to make sure that 107 participants on this call today are aware that the application does go live tomorrow. And what I want to do is equip you all to get ready for applying. So if you do meet the criteria, I went to sba.gov's website to see if I'm eligible. I do meet the eligibility requirements. What do I do next? Go to sam.gov, systems for award management. This is where this, this grant differs than the IDLE program. With the IDLE program, you apply directly through SBA's website. For this particular grant program, the Shutter Venues Operators Grant, you are applying through grants.gov. In order to apply for grants.gov or through grants.gov, you need to have a profile in place. Um, on this website here, sba.gov forward slash SVO grant, there is a YouTube video of walking through, walking you through Sam.gov how to create a profile. So you have multiple options here. I hate to tell someone the answer no without giving them a solution. That's one thing about me since day one uh, working with SBA. I will never give someone the answer no without providing a, an option. And so you have two options from, uh, from here. If you want to apply for the Shutter Venues Operators Grant, number one, go to Sam.gov, create your profile. Number two, work with our SBA resource partners. Here in San Antonio, <clears throat> the most common one is the UTSA Small Business Development Center that's located at UTSA downtown. There's also the Women's Business Center, which is located at the Central Public Library, and also SCORE, uh, that is also co-located with our district office and the Central Public Library. And if you are a veteran-owned small business owner, you can also reach out to the Veterans Business Outreach Center. I know this is a lot of information, and I promise you there's a slide later on in this presentation uh, with their contact information so you know who to contact. But again, um, you want to be ready to go for tomorrow because it, the funds are, are on a first-come, first-served basis. So once the funds are gone, um, I don't want to tell you all that they may open up the window again in the future or there might be additional funds. For example, whenever the paycheck pro uh, the triple P, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, exhausted on August 8th, there were a lot of folks that inquired and said, is the funds coming back? Are, are the funds coming back? And my answer to them is, we don't know. It just depends on what Congress pushes. Thankfully, the funds were made available again for 2021, but there was that window of uncertainty of whether or not a triple P was going to continue. So the same scenario here, uh, $16 billion allocated, you know, once $16 billion are gone, we don't know if the program is going to be extended or if additional funds are going to be authorized. So um, there are calculators on SBA's website. So if you were uh, in operation on January 1st, 2019, 45% uh, of the 2019 gross earned revenue is what you'll be eligible for. Now, if you open after January 1st, the way they're going to calculate it is the average monthly gross revenue for each full month in operation during 2019 multiplied by six. There is more information on SBA's website. I keep on emphasizing that because I'm trying to give you a quick overview, but I can assure you all, if you go to SBA's website, that link for, that's right here, the SBA.gov, SVOG, or, or SVO grant, there will be other calculators as well. Now, when the Shutter Venues Operators Grant was first made uh, aware to the public, the big key there was um, if you applied for the uh, Triple P second draw, you were not eligible for the SVOG. That has now changed. You can still receive the Triple P second draw and the SVOG grant. So this little um, visual table here shows you uh, I'm an applicant of, I'm a recipient of, you know, the triple P, can I apply for a second draw? Yes. If I'm a recipient of the, of the triple P and I want to apply for the Shutter Venues Operators Grant, you may apply if uh, received a triple P prior to uh, applying for the SVOG. So in other words, if I apply for SVOG tomorrow and then two weeks from now I apply for the second draw triple P, you're not going to be able to do that. So uh, you have to apply for the second draw of Triple P first and then apply for the SVOG, okay? Um, if you have your phone out right now, this 
I will probably take a picture of this here so you can better understand, uh, you know, if I'm a recipient of the Shutter Brand News Oper Operators Grant, can I apply for the triple P? You know, in this case here, you may not apply for a triple P loan after receiving an SVOG. I'm a recipient of the idle. Can I apply for a triple P? You may apply for a triple P, but cannot be used for the same purpose of cost. So, um, again, I will take a picture of this table. If not, uh, once uh, James and Renee and her team uh, get this posted on YouTube, you may refer back to this chart here. Okay. Um, what are other programs coming down the pipeline? So some of this stuff is not live just yet, uh, but it is forthcoming. So new programs per the American Rescue Plan Act. So in addition to what we've talked about, so this is even on top of everything else, um, there's gonna be a supplemental targeted idle advance payment. So it's a $5 billion fund for 5,000 payments to those hardest hit. So this is in addition to what we previously discussed. The big thing here, and I know there's a lot of restaurant owners that are calling me already, wanting to learn more about this. Um, be patient, more information to come about the restaurant revital revitalization fund. So do know that $28.6 billion of funds will be eligible uh, to small business, uh, or excuse me, restaurants in the near future. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a maximum of $5 million of grants per location with an aggregate maximum of $10 million. Now, what other people are very eager to learn, so this is applicable to say, um, Renee's department or you know chambers of commerce, is something called the Community Navigator Pilot Program. So research that now by going to sba.gov navigators, but there's going to be other grant programs available, uh, $100 million to eligible organizations supporting efforts to improve access to COVID pandemic assistance programs and resources. $75 million to support outreach efforts, including the creation of telephone hotlines for information and referral services. This is all new, folks. These are programs that were non-existent prior to the COVID um, or pandemic starting. So you can definitely see this administration and the last administration, they're really trying to push programs out there to help you all, the small business owners, the nonprofits, and organizations like Renee's to help small businesses recover, pivot, start during this pandemic. So I, I mentioned this early on, uh, key takeaways here is, you know, again, the Paycheck Protection Program is indeed a loan program. If you meet the criteria for the forgiveness, which is again, 60% or more for payroll purposes, making sure that you use it between eight to 24 weeks after the funds have been dispersed. The SBA debt relief, you know, initially in 2020, there was a six month uh, deferment. Now that there's an additional three months that are being deferred for if you had an existing 7A or 504 loan. The idle program um, is a loan. Uh, this, this portion, the economic injury disaster loan is a loan. If you got the idle events, that is a grant. And then more to come with the supplemental targeted idle events. Again, the Shutter Venues Operators Grant goes live tomorrow. Uh, you want to get in. You want to start talking to the SBA resource partners now to make sure that your, doc your documents are squared away. That being said, um, we as in federal employees, we are unable to assist with those applying for this. The reason being is it's competitive. Um, it is through grants.gov. And so we don't know if the other seven, 67 SBA district offices are helping small businesses. So remember what I said early on. I hate to tell you, I can't help you, but I do have the resources that can. And those resources are as follows. Here in San Antonio, we have the uh, UTSA Small Business Development Center. And then there are sub-centers located in Austin, Laredo, Eagle Pass, Victoria, San Angelo. So SBDC is our uh, flagship SBA resource partner. They have, a, a give or take, about 1,000 locations nationwide. The Women's Business Center is also located here in San Antonio at the Central Public Library. Uh, SCORE, which is a group of volunteers. These folks just volunteer their time. They want to help you all. There's a location also uh, at the Central Public Library and also in the federal building. Best way to contact them is through the phone numbers there listed or the website. And then if you uh, are located closer to Austin, so let's just say you are in the suburbs of Austin, SCORE uh, in Austin is very active as well. But I will say that the uh, SBDC San Antonio location has been extremely helpful and the Women's Business Center uh, helping small businesses pivot during this pandemic or even starting their own small business. So that's very key. Um, take another screenshot of this if you'd like. But again, I believe this presentation will be on YouTube so you can refer back to 
how do I come in contact with these SBA resource partners? Um, SBA differs than most organizations. Um, I think most of you are familiar, I would hope most of you are familiar with the cost and contacts where someone says, I want to start following your office, uh, and then there's a big database. Uh, SBA differs that uh, we all unfortunately don't have email addresses on standby. So if you want to opt in to receive our newsletters uh, to get the latest and greatest information, if you go to sba.gov updates, you type in your zip code and you opt in. We are on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is SBA underscore San Antonio. Um, we don't have an official uh, district office uh, Instagram, but the agency does. Uh, and then if you have any general questions after this presentation, you have my email address, but if you also want to email the team at San Antonio or SEDO, which stands for San Antonio District Office dot email at SBA.gov. If you want to call us to talk to us Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, you can call us at 403-5900. And then also there's most important links here, which is uh, SBA.gov relief. If you want to learn more about the Paycheck Protection Program, it's for, or uh, SBA.gov forward slash triple P, uh, IDLE, SVO grants. Uh, again, this information is current as of March 30th. So it's been about a week since this presentation was created. So um, information may, be, may have been updated since. So you definitely want to refer to these websites here to make sure you have the latest and greatest information. Again, that is my contact information. If you want to email me about a specific scenario, I know with these types of webinars, we try to answer some very broad questions that's going to help everybody, the 108 people on this call. But if you have any specific questions, shoot me an email. I will engage my team uh, to answer any questions that you may have. That being said, Renee, that concludes my brief overview of disaster assistance. Um, are there any questions? So David, can you see, thank you, David, that's great information. Um, I think you can see the chat box, but I've asked James to kind of scroll back to the top. Uh, and again, remind everyone, if you could put your question in the chat box, because it'll help us to facilitate time and we can get more questions answered. So uh, if we could scroll back up to the top and I don't know if James can see any or if you can see them, yeah, you can just start answering them. I've really only seen two questions. So um, folks, if you're still here, uh, hopefully you've been attentive, you've paid attention, you've taken screenshots uh, as asked, but if you have specific questions that you don't mind sharing regarding your business and your situation, um, or just for general information, go ahead and post them in the chat and let's see if we can get some addressed right now. Uh, David, there was one question asked regarding the sheltered venue application. Uh, okay. It was from G. Romney is the user that I have this as. Will okay. SBA deduct the second PPP loan amount or does the applicant need to do that? So it, whenever they're filling out the application for the Shutter Venues Operators Grant, there is a question on there that does ask about the Triple P if you did receive a second draw. So that will be kind of processed as the um, Shutter Venues Operators Grant application is uh, being submitted. Okay, uh, the next question that I saw in queue is from Michael. Um, I this is very specific, David. I don't know if you're going to have this information off the top of your head, but I'll read exactly what's written here. Uh, Michael states he has a painting business, and for whatever reason, he did not qualify for PPP when he originally applied. He only uses 1099 subcontractors to perform the services. Uh, he's had a reduction in business last year, but he uses personal funds to make sure he's still able to operate. Is there anything available for his business? His business is picking up, but he's still having to use his personal funds to supplement his operations. Right, so the triple P is very specific uh, to this uh, gentleman's question here. Um, whenever you submitted your triple P application, only W-2 employees could be uh, counted. And so if you had 1099 employees, uh, unfortunately you cannot claim them. And the reason being is because they, as 1099s independent contractors, could also apply for triple P themselves. So that's the biggest thing. So if you submitted the application trying to capture your 1099 employees that's a strong possibility as to why it was not approved so uh you can resubmit but just uh counting yourself as uh, the sole prop or lsc but if you don't have any w2 employees um that's where you cannot uh count them under the paycheck protection program okay uh i'm scrolling up here i saw a couple more questions come in and just so you're aware david you're getting some shout outs you did an excellent job uh i, I know i like to hear that myself I'm trying, sir. I'm trying. I'm looking at Dana's question here about the idle. 
um, did not count the three work employees. So unfortunately, if you did not count them on whenever the adult advance applications were available, uh, we cannot go back. So once the portal was closed for the idle advance, uh, there's no way to retroactively say, oh, this person filed wrong. Let's go in and award them an additional amount. So um, Dana, to your point, unfortunately, the whatever information you put on the original application is what SBA was going to process. There was a question from JF Cell. Uh, it says, how will COVID EIDL increases be calculated? Uh, increases. So if you were awarded the idle already, and recall the uh, maximum amount was 150,000. Now it is 500,000. On the presentation, or I'm sorry, on the presentation, on the application, if you were able to justify, you really needed more, let's just say you were able to calculate, I needed 250,000, but at the max at the time was 150,000. We have SBA Office of Disaster Assistance uh, combing through those applications now to see if you do qualify for more than 150,000. And that's where they're going to reach out to you directly to say, hey, John Doe, Jan Smith, do you still need an additional amount? And if so, let's let's get you scored away with getting that increase. So there's no way, there's no uh, link, there's no portal open right now to request an increase. It's the other way around where SBA is reaching out to those if there is an increase needed. Question from Carlos Zayas. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how to make the triple P forgivable? Right, so the make the triple P forgi uh, forgivable. So if you've been awarded already uh, the triple P, it's already been dispersed. Uh, the lender should have been talking to you from the get-go. That is your key partner with the Triple P is uh, the lender, whoever you got the loan with. 60% um, or more, that's key right now, for, as long as that's used for payroll purposes, right? So if you use less than that, there's a possibility it could be prorated, but you're not. it's not fully going to be forgiven. So 60% or more for payroll purposes, uh, you use it within the specified window that was negotiated between you and the lender. So whether it was eight weeks, 16 weeks, 24 weeks, that's what's key. Now, I know you answered a question from Dana, but I think she posed an earlier question. If you received your first uh, Triple P draw during the second draw, can you still get a second draw? I would recommend talking to the lender on that because my understanding is the first draw were the loans that were submitted prior to August 8th of 2020. And I know there's a lot of talks about uh, December 27th, making sure that you submitted your first triple P versus the second uh, triple P. Now from G. Wilson, I think you may have addressed this when you mentioned the W-2 employers, but this question says, I'm a sole proprietor, but I operate my business under a corporation where I have elected S Corp for tax purposes. Therefore, I do not use a Schedule C. How do I apply for the triple P? I only have contract employees. So again, it's gotta be W-2 employees. That's a big differentiator between uh, whether or not you can document the employees or not is when you look at the payroll or when SBA looks at the payroll, the SBA participating lenders, they're gonna look for W-2s versus 1099s. That's what's key. So David, is there anything else available to those types of businesses? Any other programs the SBA has? It, it depends, Renee, on what industry they are in. So there is, uh, for example, if for those that are doing exporting, there are something called the STEP grants available, the State Trade Expansion Program, where it is a loan, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's a grant up to $10,000 for uh, small businesses that are doing something pertaining to export. So whether that is you're exporting your products or services, you need help with translating your website to another foreign language. So um, the restaurant revitalization is coming online soon. The SVOG goes online tomorrow. The um, STEP grant is available also as well. But other than that, Renee, um, what I would do in my advice to the small business owners on this call is, you know, check in constantly with the city of San Antonio. I know, for example, the economic, economic development department had a loan of, or I'm sorry, a grants available to, uh, small businesses that were located in a certain area. They were in a certain industry, uh, also available. Thank you. There's a, again, another kind of specific question from Ricardo Rodriguez. If you filed an 1120S for the 2019 tax return, he does not have a Schedule C. He has a Schedule K. He is the sole owner. I have 1099 issues. So I, I guess these are more statements. Uh, Ricardo, I'll tell you what, we'll follow up with you in particular, make sure we're getting that question phrased right. Or if you want to clarify further in the, the chat box. Uh, there's a question from uh, Amin. Uh, is SBA certification for a small business required in order to get help? 
Um, certified by SBA, I'm going to go with no. I mean, that's kind of more like the government contracting side. So um, you don't need to be certified by SBA. I mean, as long as you are an established uh, small business that you're, you've been in place prior to uh, February of 2020, then you can receive technical assistance. You can receive loans. Uh, by no means do you have to be certified like a minority owner, woman owned or veteran owned or something like that to get assistance. No, that's not accurate. So we're, we're here to help. You know, uh, I know Renee and your team has been instrumental helping. Uh, same thing with the SBA too. We have our resource partners that can also stand by and help small businesses. Question from Alex Nero. Is the requirement for the second draw triple P loan a reduction of 25% revenue in any one quarter between 2019 and 2020 or 25% for the entire year between 2019 and 2020? Comparable quarters. That's the key word right there. Uh, comparable quarters between 2019 and 2020. So you have to compare your 2019 uh, first quarter to uh, first quarter of 2020. So it's not like I want to do uh, first quarter of 2019 or third quarter 2020. No, it's got to be uh, the same quarters from 2019 to 2020. Okay. Uh, we're going in order of how we receive these. So just FYI, there's another question from Dana. I don't think this is the one you answered earlier for her. Uh, when applying for EIDL before I got the $1,000 for the grant, because I put, we had one employee, I did not count the three working owners. Can I still apply for the grant funds for three employees? I did not count. Right. That was what I uh, addressed okay. earlier. So whatever was submitted originally. Yeah. That's the, um, the, the, the uh, idle advanced portal is no longer open. Okay. Uh, now this next one, first name, very difficult for me to interpret. Uh, last name, Muhammad. I got the EIDL and not the PPP. I didn't understand why. I had all the information in the uh, 990 and 941 financial sheets. Um, I got the EIDL, not the, oh, it's pasted it's twice. Same, same thing, same yeah. thing. Okay. Um, you know, there could be different circumstances. I know that's a kind of on a case by case scenario as to why someone got the idol versus the paycheck protection program. That being said, um, there's nothing that's prohibiting uh, uh, you from applying for a triple P with another lender, perhaps to possibly get a reconsideration. Um, again, with the idol, there's only certain requirements. It just depends on what was submitted on the applications and also the loan amounts. So perhaps it, you know, the triple P you're asking for more versus the idle. Were you able to distinguish the, the idle and the triple P were used for different purposes? So there's a lot of uh, factors involved. The next question is, for, is from a Mr. Churchill. Um, this one might be a direction of resources, but he states that he keeps getting uh, denied when he applies for his second triple P and he's not sure why. Is there a specific resource you can direct him to to assist him with the application? So, Mr. Churchill, if you got approved for the first draw of Triple P and you're getting declined for the second draw, shoot me an email because I know there's error codes that bankers have been receiving that they can fix on their end. There's certain error codes that we SBA have to uh, review on our end before approving. So, shoot me an email after this uh, and I'll get one of my lender relations specialists to engage with you to see what's going on with your second draw. Especially if you got approved for the first draw, we got to see, we may have to do a little more troubleshoot to see what's going on with your second application. Question from Claudia. Can you apply for triple P if you have an 1120S and not a Schedule C or Schedule F? For eligibility purposes, I would highly recommend talking to an SBA uh, triple P participating lender because I know there's a lot of case-by-case -case scenarios where, especially for 1120S, uh, to determine whether or not you can get approved. Question from Blade. If we... Uh, looks like if we submitted the EIDL incorrect, does it affect our new application? What credit scores are necessary? We don't have a like bottom line uh, credit score. Um, if you submitted your idle uh, application incorrectly, the question becomes then, were you approved for a certain amount? Were you denied? There is a reconsideration process if your idle application was denied. You should have received a letter, a uh, denial letter, and what you can do to uh, overcome that denial to get approved for an idle. Question from Brian Coles. We submitted a loan increase for EIDL. We submitted the documentations that were requested three separate times. Uh, we never received an email. What can we do? Um, two, two options. Uh, one, uh, Brian, shoot me an email, uh, and I can escalate it to the Office of Disaster Assistance, and let, let's hit it from two different angles. So as I try to escalate it on my end, you can also call the SBA um, Disaster Assistance line at 1-800-659-2955.
1-800-659-2955. And shoot me an email with your application number, Brian. It should start with a three. Yeah, I was about to see if our staff could throw up your email address. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question here from um, F. Villainy. I run a nonprofit. We just filed our tax return for October 1, 2019 through September 2020, but it is our 2019 form. We'll be sending our 2018 and 2019 regarding the sheltered venue. Uh, it will not be awarded until the 2020. Our 990 are filed. That would be in February of 2022. Any advice on how to explain this to the SBA? The SBA resource partners, there's four of them. The only one that works with nonprofits is SCORE. So to uh, this question here, get with SCORE because they can assist with uh, nonprofits as well. And we obviously want to make sure that you have the right information uh, whenever you apply for the SVOG. So something else, James, I will point out, there was a question of, is there going to be a reconsideration for the SVOG? And, you know, I'm pretty confident there's not because with grants.gov, whatever you submit is what you submit. There is no, you submitted something wrong, please play again type of scenario. Uh, so I would highly encourage those folks to start leveraging our SBA resource partners to make sure that all the information that you submit is right on the first try. Because unlike the idle, I strongly suspect there is not going to be a reconsideration process for the SVLG. Okay. Uh, Sandra has a very specific question. Is there a definition for fixed audience seating? How many seats are required? Or if you have a small number of fixed seating, are you still eligible? No, there's no definition of the number of seats. So, you know, the big thing here is uh, if I have an old uh, theater, you know, I'm eligible. But if I have a dance hall that I can convert into a different type of small business model, that's where it becomes questionable to SBA as to uh, what exactly is defined as a fixed uh, seating type of venue. Okay. From Camilla, was approved for $10,000. However, it stayed in pending status for months and then 5000 within a week, it went away. I have not received any payment through the entire process. Am I allowed to reapply? It stated in pending status for months and then for those within a week, what do I have not received payment through the entire process? Can I reapply? Is this for the idol or is this for the triple P? Yeah. Uh, Camilla, if you could follow up down at the bottom there, give us a little <clears> more context. Uh, G. Romney, again, for the sheltered venue, uh, will digital signatures work or do they need to be wet signatures? It's going to be online through grass.gov, the documents. So I'm going to go with whatever you submit on, on grants.gov. So I don't, I don't think you need wet signatures as of right now. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm jumping down to Alan Martin. I'm a travel agent that has been in business for 20 plus years. I'm a sole proprietor and received a triple P loan in 2020. It was approved for the forgiveness. I did get a triple P loan in 2021, but for the lower amount before the new re recalculation on that amount. Can I apply for EIDL loan or any type of grant loan? Sure. So triple P, if your application was pending, I know there was a new calculation for Schedule C. If your application was pending for uh, the triple P, you could get that uh, revised. But if the funds were dispersed already, there's no changes that can be made to the triple P under the Schedule C. Um, can I apply for IDLE? If you had not have applied for IDLE before, yeah, you can apply for IDLE still. Um, as long as you could differentiate the funds for IDLE are different than what you apply for a triple P. Hey, um, I know you're following along there, David. I'm jumping down to Art at 10.49 a.m. On the second Triple P, I do not meet the 25% reduction of sales. Is there any way around this? I happen to be a disabled vet in a hub zone. The um, policies in place, unfortunately, Art are pretty specific that you have to have a 25% reduction. Um, for that, um, look over SBA's website under Triple P second draw. Look at the calculations. But I'm pretty confident uh, that's going to stick the 25% reduction. Unfortunately. Um, if you have certain certifications, in this case, disabled veteran hub zone, that does not differentiate versus someone who's not a disabled veteran or not located in a hub zone. Question from Karen. Has the San Antonio maps for low income eligibility changed for the targeted EIDL since the relaunch? There is a link, uh, Karen, on SBA's website that shows you could type in. Um, I, I would just Google. Uh, SBA uh, low income uh, map, eligibility map, and there is a link that's sba.gov. You type in your address and that'll tell you whether or not you're located in a low income area. Okay. Uh, whom should I contact for more info on Community Navigator's pilot program? Absolutely. 
absolutely. Uh, SBA.gov forward slash navigators. That's where the latest information is for navigators, uh, the, the community navigator pilot program. And there is a PDF file that you can reference us right now uh, as more information does come online. So I can say right now it's still building behind the scenes, the community navigators pilot program. But uh, for the latest information, Rudy's, uh, go to SBA.gov forward slash navigators. Okay. Um... Again, David, I know you're following along. I'm looking at Juan uh, from 1051 AM. This one looks like you might need to follow. I received $1,000 EIDL advance grant last year and a triple P loan. When getting the triple P loan forgiven, I had to pay $1,000 EIDL grant back. I recently noticed that $1,000 was returned to my account. Did the SBA return the EIDL grant amount after the triple P was forgiven? So... Recall during the presentation, initially you had to claim if you had the idle advance whenever you got the triple P. And then they changed it to where, okay, you know what, we're going to scratch that. So if you did repay that back, that's that $1,000 that was returned to you is that grant money back. Okay, uh, 1052 AM, uh, last name Mohammed. Are they basing these loans by your credit? If you ever heard of the five C's of getting a loan, I'm thinking it's all that plays into consideration. So it's your credit, your ability to repay, uh, uh, collateral. So it's just more than just credit. Okay, a uh, question from G. Wilson. If you have multiple locations and you applied for the Triple P for all of the locations combined, I had a 25% revenue reduction in some of the locations for a quarter, not all locations. Do I have to have a 25% reduction in all locations for a quarter? That's very uh, subjective, Jason, whether or not you submitted the triple P based off your EINs individually or all under one EIN. Uh, question from Art, and I think we did mention some of this earlier. I missed the 25% reduction by just a couple points. Can I still receive the second triple P? Uh, chances of getting approved are gonna be very low. Uh, in that case, Art, what I would do, sir, is uh talk to the bankers you know show them your your numbers and work with the bankers on that case there but i know for sure the 25 percent is a firm number and there is no um up or down wiggle room i should say okay uh question from student is not meeting projected incomes for 2020 and 2021 make one qualify for eidl as lost income due to covid so if they're not meeting what they projected to be their incomes if you were in business uh, before February 2020, uh, you know you can apply for the idle. Uh, but if you have projections, that's different than what historical data you have. So I want to clarify that projections is different than historical data, and that's what a lot of these disaster assistance programs are designed on: is historical versus what I projected I wanted to make. So uh, I want to look at Comfort's question. Uh, we, we happen, our office has to be right next to the DBA office. A lot of new form businesses come in looking for uh, resources for brand new businesses, especially sole proprietors. Comfort asks, are there any information on grants or loans for brand new businesses? Now, I know you touched on nonprofit, but for the new businesses or for nonprofits, do you know of any resources that they can be directed to where they can't indicate loss of revenue? Um, any, so I'm gonna go back to the original question of grants and loans for brand new. So yes, you can apply for uh, loans using the uh, SBA flagship program, 7A504 micro loans. You know, working with our micro lenders, especially here in San Antonio has been crucial. As far as grants uh, under SBA right now, there is a requirement that you have to be existing small businesses to apply for certain grants right now. But um, leveraging the SBA resource partners too, for someone that's starting a new small business, talk to the resource partners. They can help you with your business plan, financial projections, marketing, uh, pivoting your small business as well during this time. Okay, question from AJ. I filed EIDL received grant email. However, my EIN was off by one digit. I sent the 2019 tax forms to confirm the information was off by a digit. After waiting for a response without one, I submitted my application with the wrong number. Will the correction attached to that be sufficed? So the portal for the idle advance receives grants. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming he's talking about the idle advance. If that's the case, then there's no more grants being uh, dispersed under the idle advance. Question from Debbie. Uh, I applied for Triple P through Randolph Brooks. They have not responded. Can I reapply through Frost Bank? Great question, Debbie. Um, you, what you want to do is reach out to Randolph Brooks, if, if possible, if you can reach out to him. Have them uh, cancel your application because what's going to happen is if you go to Frost Bank, try to resubmit another application, it's going to get flagged in our system that there's already one pending. 
Uh, De Debbie, to, to Debbie's point, also shoot me an email. I'll get my lender relations specialist uh, engaged on this one too. So in case we do need to reach out to Randolph Brooks to have them cancel that loan so you can go to Frost, uh, we can get that squared away for you. Uh, regarding when the question of uh, when will this be on YouTube, we're going to post this immediately. Give us about an hour to clean up the content. We're going to post it immediately on our channel. And I uh, see that the uh, low income map has been posted. Thank you very much uh, to the person that uh, posted the uh, map as well. Sure. Question from Tom. Uh, what if we just started our business at the end of 2019 and in 2020, we have a full year. Can we still apply for a second triple P even though our sales are higher now? So for the second draw, it's got to be a 25% reduction. That's the key it's from 2019 to 2020. So from uh, Karen Turnoff, we apply for the first triple P forgiveness. The bank says it takes up to 60 days. The SBA may take up to 90 days. If the first payment is due before we get the approval for the forgiveness, what can we do? The first payment doesn't, your, the clock doesn't start until the funds are dispersed. So I'll give you peace of mind there. So just because it's the time has already passed as far as when it was approved, but the clock starts whenever uh, funds are dispersed. Okay, follow up from Muhammad on that target loan. If I have moved from that address from last year, how will that affect me? That will impact you for sure if you're not located in a low income area anymore. So if you were in a low income area, you're not anymore. Uh, and there, and you say, you know, I still wanna receive the funds and there's an audit done, you will be responsible to repay those funds. Question from Mark Sullivan. I own a biomedical service company in a hub zone with a 501c3 text position, World's Fair. I have no debt. I, oh, he gives his credit score. In 2019, I paid cash for the land near the Pearl to build a new shop. Can you help with a grant for us to build the new shop? I filed for EIDL and got nothing. I filed recons and got no reply. So the purpose of the grants that we have right now is to help uh, maintain what you already have currently in place. It's not to, to build on something new. Okay, uh, those are all the questions that we have. Uh, Hallelujah, we made it. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, one more time, just because we are going to put this on YouTube, uh, and you did mention why it was important that we get this out today. Can you can you talk about what's coming out, what to expect uh, in the coming days, how the information is going to be updated? So absolutely, uh, what we're gonna do from an office standpoint is we're gonna do a newsletter blast, um, but for sure the key things right now is uh, the Paycheck Protection Program uh, is still in place until May 31st or until funds are exhausted. The idle deadline is December 31st, 2021. SVOG goes live tomorrow. More to come on the restaurant revitalization and the Community Navigators Pilot Program. So thank you, David. One of the things that we will remind everybody, if you did, if you have not put your contact information, please put that in the chat because we will be providing all of the transcripts for this to David uh, Elizondo so he can uh, connect it with his team to make sure that you are on his information. We appreciate, it looks like we're, we're on time. We're, we really appreciate that. The PowerPoint um, slide deck will also be posted and sent out to everyone. Um, via our team uh, with the YouTube uh, link. Uh, so everybody will have that as well. So thank you and everyone have a great day. All right, thank you Renee, thank you to your team as well.